Welcome to Community Connect. My name is Dennis Threadgill. Here I have with me Mike Fritz, pro tem mayor of the city of Grand Haven. Welcome. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you, Dennis. I, this is quite quite nice. It's a great place, isn't it? Isn't it? Here got, at the, got the uh, Spring going. Lake Country Club. What do they call this? Uh, fireside chat? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, last time we spoke to Jerry McCaleb, yep. and we were talking about the infrastructure and how vital it is for the city of Grand Haven. Today we're going to talk a little bit, we're going to continue with the infrastructure, but um, talk about the importance of it for businesses, schools, and then with parks and recreation. Yeah. Well, the reason why I think it's so vital is I look at it as like my my body. My heart is the main thing, and, and it pumps out through the veins in that. So you go and you see the water plant, and you have the infrastructure going out. you got to make sure it's all in good and healthy. If that's not healthy, you're not healthy, and the community's not healthy. So that's what we need to do. We need to maintain that, just like we do our body and our, everything else. Mm -hmm. Everything is how it works. So it starts at that water plant. Yep. Coming right from plant. Lake Michigan and being filtrated. So, yes. Perfect. So first of all, tell me a little bit about the businesses and how it affects businesses. Well, it's uh, if you invest in your community and, and that is falling apart, if your infrastructure is falling apart, and you know, we expect to get strong, reliable businesses to come here, they won't be attracted if we don't have that. Um, we need to show someone that is mining the store pretty much. We have to show them that we're doing that and taking care of our streets and water and our sewer systems and all that. We need to take care of that. If we don't, we won't be able to attract businesses. They use a lot of water. They, a good example is we have a brew, couple breweries here now and they love our water because we are so, our water is so good so we have to maintain those high standards. And if it weren't for having good water, then they would have to put in more filtration system or Absolutely. bring in water. So it's important to have that good water to have the good beer. Absolutely. Oh, perfect. Whatever it is, but we need to maintain it because a lot of businesses use a lot of water in that. So, and mm -hmm. also got to have a good sewer system, and we got to have good roads for them to get their workers to to work. Sure. And without that, the the whole system starts to break down, and they either can't get to work or they're closed for uh, you know yes to repairs. It could be like some other cities in this state. I won't name, but <laughs> we we need to maintain it, and that's what we're trying to do the best of. Right. And tell me a little bit about then schools. How does it affect schools and why is it important? Well, kids need to get to school on safe roads. A good example, I mean, you can't go down roads if, with those buses. They're, they're not made to go on real rough roads. It's really difficult. If you lived in a country, you know what I'm talking about. And we also found excessive um, levels of PFAS in the drinking water at one of our local schools. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that we maintain our water systems and healthy. And, and if we're... Uh, Educating our children on having clean, safe water, and we're educating them all that. We need to be with them. You know, we need to show them that we are doing the job that we should be doing for them. We just need to teach them and let them know that we are doing the best we can and moving forward with it. And what are some of the things that the city is working on to make sure that the roads are where they should be, the water is clean and healthy? <laughs> well, right now we've been doing, well, we've had two millages that we went through, and we put in, in new infrastructure. We've been putting in new, uh, new sewer systems, uh, water systems. We go down and we're actually rebuilding the roads at the same time because a lot of those are pretty over 100 years old, and we need to get to them and make sure that they're all safe. We can get rid of the old pipes and putting new in so everything flows nice and you have safe, clean water mm -hmm. here, and, and the sewer works beautiful when you want it to work. Sure. And you don't need backups. <laughs> And how much of does the city do versus having to subcontract that out? Well, our guys, what's really nice is if you go to our DPW guys, uh, when I got on council, we had a water department and we had public works, you know, they did the streets mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Now a lot of them have been cross-trained. They, they have their licenses in doing water. So when it comes into emergency repairs and that, we have guys on first and second shift, which come down and actually take care of all that, which is really, really good. Good. Which in return, I'm sure, saves the city it's, money by not having to outsource things that we can do in-house, per se. Absolutely. But when it comes down to the major stuff, then we have to outsource. And when we're sure. doing road constructions and stuff like that, then you have to go out and hire, okay. you know, take bids and get it in. 
for sure. Well, at some point you can't have everybody on staff. You have to, you know, yes. kind of find those strengths. But if and we're doing them. small repairs mm -hmm. and some emergency repairs, we're we're ready to go. We have all the equipment. We have cameras now. We can go right down the sewers and see exactly where the problems are and, mm -hmm. and get to them and fix them. So it's really good. Great. So we talked about businesses and schools, and what about parks and recreation? How does the uh, uh, great infrastructure benefit that? Well, if you look at all our parks, they're all beautiful. Mm -hmm. Come summertime, they're all nice and green. It takes water. Um, wintertime, you like to go to Mulligan's Hollow and go skiing. Mm -hmm. What do we got down there? <laughs> we have snow making machines. It takes a lot of water. Okay. And, so, and uh, also, our kids like to go to our parks and have um, restrooms. Mm -hmm. We have nine of them around this town in our different parks, and we're adding another one now at Saluka Field, which is going to be a great addition to the east side okay. there. So you need to have that. That's, as far as recreation, you need all these to go together. You need water, you need sewer, and you need a good road to get there. Perfect. Yeah. Great. So t uh, can you tell me a little bit about what's coming this summer, you know, in the parks department? In the parks, well, we're put in for a grant for Mulligan's Hollow and Saluka Field, but right now we'll be starting at Saluka Field. We're building a new uh, the restroom, actually, mm -hmm. but it's, a, it's more than just a restroom. It's part of the baseball field, the way it's going to look out there. It's going to make it look more like a stadium look. Oh, wow. And you're also going to have uh, Tri-Cities Kids League has an area in there, which they've been there for years. And so we're adding that on there, and you're also going to have kind of like a concession stand with it and everything else that goes along with it. So it's going to be pretty interesting. It's going to change that whole area around. Great. And we're putting a grant in for some new uh, playground equipment over there, so we're trying to get that all-inclusive over there, too, mm -hmm. just like we did down at uh, Mulligan's Hollow. Well, thank you very much for being on the show today. We appreciate it. <laughs> thank and, uh, you. And thanks for sharing some information. I appreciate it very much. This has been a great time. I'm, we're so lucky to have this going. I know, warming up by the fire. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you for watching Community Connect. We'll see you next time. Rui Homes has been connecting people to their perfect home since 2003. Whether it's your first home, family is starting to grow, or time for retirement, Dave and Stacy's expertise find the home for you and your family. Dave Rui Homes. D. Baker & Son Lumber Company has been connecting with the Tri-Cities since 1871. Our traditions haven't changed in all these years. Quality products, honest pricing, and partnerships with local suppliers is why D. Baker & Son Lumber Company stands the test of time.